This program is proudly brought to you by the Albion Park Harness Racing Club's additional $78,000 contribution to prize money, being distributed from October to December in selected MO to M4 races. And a very good evening everyone, welcome to this Boxing Day edition of Blinkers Off and hopefully you're coming out of a great Christmas day. Chris Barsby is joining me, no rest for the weekend, how are you Chris? I'm very well thanks David. And of course so we look towards the end of the year, not too far away, it's been, it's been a, a big year and gone very quickly. It certainly has been a big year for a number of reasons uh, but uh, we're drawing to the close of 2011, let's hope that 2012 will be much brighter. What was your racing highlight for this year? Oh, racing highlight? Uh, that's a very good question. Well, you, you have a think about it because uh, it has been a, well, an interesting year for Queensland Harness Racing and uh, we're always at the tracks here at Blinkers Off and we gathered a few opinions over the last couple of months. It's hard to say where, where it's heading at the moment because, um, you know, about, you know, all the stories and that getting around and, um, you know, stewards are certainly making it pretty hard, hard for people as well, being as, being as hard as they are, but, um, yeah, so. At the moment, we're in the crossroads of harness industry. Unfortunately, I think we're losing crowds. There's too many other sports that people are betting on. We need to probably lift our game a little bit. Um, I've been in the industry for probably 25, 30 years and I've seen a, a definite decline on, on crowds, on people, on purses. We probably need more money in prize money. Um, uh, we have the good horses, but we just need probably the government to help us out a bit more and stick with the people. We need what, what the people want. They should start listening. And the harness industry is a great industry. So we should, more no, people stick behind it. It's, a, it's, they used to call it the poor man's sport, but it isn't. It's, it's, we, we have so many great people in the harness racing, racing industry that we should keep it alive and keep it going well, so. I'm not happy that the Gold Coast is closing, but we can thank Mr. Bennett for that, can't we? Yes, yes. Next year. Next year. So everybody that's here has to move or get out of it. Al Barnes joins us now, a man who's getting more horses in Queensland and the team's going very well, mate. Harness racing in Queensland, how's it going f as far as you're concerned? Yeah, I think it's coming along pretty good. Uh, prize money's increased and the promise of a bigger track. Um, so I think Queensland racing's going pretty good. Mate, uh, what do you think of Albion Park here? I love it. It's a home of harness racing here in Queensland. I'd love for it to stay. A bigger track would be nice, but it'd be nice for Albion Park to stay too. But, yeah, it's good to come back here. You're finding owners are interested in getting into the game? They are. They are up here. I've had a lot of interest in the last two or three weeks, so they're still out there and they're still keen to send horses to Queensland. Thanks, Al. Good on it. Yes, interesting comments there. I think the underlying theme to, uh, to all of those comments, I don't want to discuss them you know, individually, that there is a lot of uncertainty. Now, this is not a, a hatchet job on racing Queensland, but the fact of, you know, will we stay at Albion Park? Is Deegan going to happen? It's very hard for people to look to the short-term future, let alone the long-term future? There's no doubt about that. Uh, it's a very good question. What does uh, the future hold for harness racing? I'm sure we'll get a clearer indication uh, once the government, uh, well, depending what government gets mm. uh, voted in, in, uh, in late February, we'll decide uh, you know, where we go with harness racing. It's a very good question. What does the future hold? I don't think anyone could uh, give a, a clear indication. Well, there, there's been uncertainty anyway, but it's been heightened by the fact that, uh, you know, there is a, an election looming and a very strong possibility there will be a change of government. So, you know, uh, what policies will they adopt? I mean, will they keep some of the policies of, of the present race in Queensland? I've, I've written about this, we've discussed it. Uh, it, it does make it difficult for those competing in the industry, you know, and there's the Albion Park Deegan issue has probably been the biggest issue of the year in harness racing, but other issues too, like uh, the breeders' bonuses, the dropping of the, the classic races and the four-year-old tried, have all caused a lot of discussion in the, in the community. So hopefully, hopefully post-election, either result, uh, we'll have a clear and more definitive picture of where we're heading. We need it. Yeah, we exactly. Need it quickly. <laughs> exactly right. Well, folks, um, we're going to go to a break now when we come back. Uh, more on this Boxing Day edition of Blinkers Off. Welcome back to the show. The McCarthy family have been uh, a powerful 
name in Queensland harness racing from the late 90s. And of course we know the, the deeds and the achievements of John, father, and also sons Luke and Andrew, or Andy as he's uh, affectionately known. But there's another one rising in the ranks and that's the youngest son of John and Arel McCarthy, Todd McCarthy. Chris Barsby recently caught up with the rookie of the McCarthy team. The McCarthy name is well known to many in harness racing circles. Most know them here in Queensland. They've had great success over the past decade. A young driver on the way up is Todd McCarthy. And this morning, I want to find out a little bit more about the star young rangeman. Toddy, thanks for your time. Uh, I want to start just on, on your career and where it's headed and where it's been thus far. You were probably destined to be involved in harness racing, given the success of the family. But uh, when you first, you know, became at a a young age, you were interested in horsepower of a different kind, I think that's fair to say. Yeah, that's right. I, uh, I was never really interested as much in the uh, horses as was I was in the bikes, mm -hmm. but um, you know, as time come around I realised you sort of, you got to make a career of something and mm -hmm. it turned out to be the horses I wanted. You still love your bikes, you still love your jet skis and you still love your cars, so you still have that passion for horsepower, but uh, you now make a living out of the, uh, the actual horses themselves now. Yeah, that's right. It's sort of, uh, it's good still having them few little hobbies, you know, something you can get away from the horses a little bit with, but um, always still love getting back out uh, on the track, you know. Yeah, but it's important and it's a good point that you make, you've got to have that hobby, something just to, to get your, you know, head out of it and just clear your head basically and uh, having those hobbies, it's something that you can do. That's right. Um, you know, when you, you go out on the weekend, wherever you're bike riding or you go jet skiing or something like that, it's good just to get away and... It, you can sort of forget about the horses for a little bit and it freshens up. So when did you finally realise that you've got to make a decision? Was it something that you worked out yourself or was there a little bit of pressure there? No, there was no pressure there. Uh, Mum and Dad were just going to support me whatever I wanted to do. And, um, you know, racing the bikes and that, and that was sort of, that was taking up a lot of my weekends and that. And then when I started uh, doing my trials, I, I sort of, I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. And, you know, and that was when I made the decision I want to start racing full time and just do the horses more. Speaking of pressure, did you feel any? Do you feel any now, like given the success that your big brothers have had, Luke and Andy? Well, I, I put the pressure mostly on myself, mm -hmm. um, but mum and dad are always, they've, you know, they, they, they've never put any pressure on me whatsoever. And it's, it's mostly me. I feel like I've got to, you know, really try and push myself as hard as I can to be better. But um, no, mum and dad, they've always been fantastic, yeah. Are you surprised by the success that you've had? I think you've had uh, well over 60 winners now and you've only had your licence for a few seasons. So are you happy with the success that you're getting or are you looking for that little bit more? No, I'm, I'm pretty happy where I'm at at the, uh, at the moment. But, you know, I always um, hope to improve on my driving skills, obviously, and mm. that comes in time. But uh, I think it's just one of them things, you know, time, time is of the asset, you know. Absolutely. Uh, with your father, John, uh, he's been the leading trainer here in the state for almost a decade now. He's been at the top of the tree for a long time. Is he still giving you good advice day in, day out? Yeah, for sure. Mm. Any, any thought of leaving mum and dad's and heading elsewhere just to, you know, nah. apply your trade somewhere else? No, I, uh, I'm pretty happy here at the moment. I'm sort of, now the, the boys are gone, the two, my two older brothers, I'm sort of, you know, it's just me and dad driving. And um, I'd be crazy to leave. I think I'm getting too good at drives. Okay, fair enough. Uh, just on, on Luke, firstly, uh, he's made the move to Sydney. Are you surprised by the way he's going down there? No, not at all. Luke's always, you know, conducting himself very professionally up here, and he's always working with him day in, day out. You always knew he was going to do a good job because he's always been a good horseman. But um, at the rate that he's done it at, it's been, you know, it's awesome. It's, you know, mm. it's great. There's been no uh, phone calls saying uh, there's a job down here if you want it. <laughs> I think um, I think I could have one down there if I if I wanted to, but you know we both know that up here is just the right place for me at the moment. Your other brother Andy, uh, he's made uh, a success of it overseas, North America, went in a completely different direction to Luke. Uh, he's done wonderful things up there. He's had very good success. Obviously, you're proud, but. Uh, Obviously, you know, there's a chance that you could go up there one day and do a similar thing. Has that thought crossed your mind? Yeah, it's always, you know, since Andrew's gone up there, you've sort of thought, oh, you wonder, you know, you'd love to go up there and just have a little crack at it. Not so much probably try and do, um, to try and do what Andrew's done, that's a huge thing. But, you know, I definitely in the, in the future I'll be going up to America to have a drive and just see what it's about up there. 
in a way, they've got different styles. They're similar in, in a lot of ways, but they're different in a lot of other ways. Which yeah. one do you mould yourself on more, Luke or Andy? I suppose Luke, because you see him a lot more than Andy. Yeah, that's right. Andrew's, uh, Andrew's driving style, he's, sort of, he's quite aggressive, you know, and he, he, can really, he can really get horses going like that. And Luke's, he, uh, he's a very he's a smart driver, Luke. They're both, they're both fantastic drivers. It's hard to, you know, put, put anything between them. Mm. But, um, and yeah, e either way, whether you'd have to choose, I think I'm probably more a little bit... Um, I'm probably right in between, I'd like to say. What about your dad? Do you copy any of his sort of uh, skills from the bike? Yeah, dad, dad teaches me a lot on how to, you know, get horses on the bit and he, he's really good at that. Mm. Uh, as far as the future goes, uh, you know, you've mentioned that you're, you're happy here in Queensland. When do we start seeing you roll out uh, some of your own horses? Because it didn't take long for Luke and Andy to have their own trainer's licence and that's probably the next big step for you, having your own trainer's licence. So have you started to think about that yet? Yeah, for sure. It's always been there, even um, you know, when I started doing my driver's licence, we were sort of looking at that. But um, probably in the next, in the next uh, couple of months, I'll probably have to have a bit of a serious look at that and you know, doing the course and stuff like that. You've been fortunate thus far to sit behind some good horses, uh, two that quickly come to mind, Mr Feelgood in trials, Be Good Johnny in Group 1 races. That must have been a huge thrill driving him in the recent uh, Spring Carnival features. Yeah, it was uh, awesome for you know, Mum and Dad to give me that opportunity. And um, you know, they were really good about it and they just said whatever happens, happens. You know, there's no pressure on you, not going out in favour or anything like that. And um, I was happy with him throughout the carnival there. And, it was, a good, it was a good experience, it was a good horse to go into them races on because you knew you had no pressure. Are they different horses to drive, say, compared to the normal ones? Do they just give you that instant feel that they're just better than the, you know, the average one? Yeah, when you, when you sit behind a good one, you can, you can really feel it. You know, you've got something in front of you, you know. Another horse, and I'm, I'm tipping this guy's probably your favourite for a lot of different reasons, but he's been a great horse for the stable, he's been a true warrior. Nicky's Falcon. Yeah. How many races have you won with him now? Oh, I, I couldn't tell you. Um, he, I've won a fair few on him. He's, he's just been a fantastic old horse. You know, he can just sit off the speed and then just sprint home, and he always rolls over top of him. But he's a he's a beautiful horse to drive. He's so easy to drive, and I, I've sort of I think a lot of my skills I, I've really learnt on that horse, mm. particularly that horse, because he's so simple to drive, and you can really concentrate on more things in the race and trying to read a race a lot better. But um, no, he's, he's, he'll always be right up there for one of my favourites. I suppose, like the good Johnny, uh, Nicky's Falcon, he's been able to give yourself, Andy, Luke, and even John, um, that thrill of uh, victory. He's been a great horse for all four of you guys. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's, sort of, he's sort of one of the family, that horse. Mm. He's, he's a beautiful old horse, and even just having him around home, you enjoy working with him. Yeah, he's not getting any younger, but uh, he still has that love of racing, doesn't he, Nicky's Falcon? You can tell when he gets to the racetrack, he's keen to be there, despite his age. Yeah, no, he, uh, you know, at the moment, age isn't too much of an issue for him. He's sound and he's happy and he wants to do it. So as, as long as he always feels like that, you know, he'll always be going around. Another thing that you've been able to achieve recently, uh, you, you shot over to Perth, uh, you answered an SOS from leading trainer Greg Bond, you were able to take a, a winning drive at Gloucester Park. It, it basically came out of the blue, that opportunity, but you made the most of it. You, you would have been proud that night. Yeah, that was, uh, that was you know, probably a little, wasn't a, wasn't a real big race, but it was still a little highlight, you know, it was mm. going somewhere totally different and, um, you know, making the most of it. But uh, when Greg called me, I just jumped at the opportunity. I thought it would be fantastic. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great news. Just on the, on the driving front, um, tell me this. Do you like being in front or do you like coming off at good speed? Uh, I, like, I like being up the front there somewhere. I think, you know, most of the races, win, the winners come from up around the front there somewhere. It's, it is hard coming from the back these mm. days. But, yeah, people still do it. But I, I, like it. I like it when I'm up front and in the race. Queensland's been able to produce some really good horses in the last decade in particular. They've also produced some good young drivers. The current crop of young driving talent, and you can answer this better than anyone, it's very strong at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of the young drivers up here are really good drivers, and a lot of them are uh, really smart and switched on. But um, it's, you know, it, it's, it makes a lot of competition for you, but mm. it's good competition. You enjoy it. 
for a young person who's, you know, say, watching this interview tonight, uh, what would you say, you know, is the best way to get involved in harness racing? Because it's not easy. A lot of these, you know, uh, bigger stables are, are family-run stables. So if you're a, a newcomer to the sport, you're keen to cut your teeth driving, what would you say would be the best thing to, to do to, to go about getting a, a go? I think it's, uh, like you said, it, it is really hard unless you were born into a harness mm -hmm. racing, you know. I'm, I've just been fortunate enough that I was brought up in a family, you know, that's so much into racing and, um, you know, and that's what's worked out so good for me, I guess. But if you sort of weren't into it, I guess you just got to work your way up and start at the stable somewhere mm. and, you know, go through the motions, doing track work and, until you get to the races. But, um, no, I can understand that and that's, that's very hard. I've just been blessed that I've been able to have the opportunities I've had. We're approaching a new year. Um What's your goals for the uh, upcoming year? Uh, hopefully just to have a really good season again and just try and go around as long as all the horses stay you know, healthy and happy in that and hope just, just keep winning races throughout the season. That'd be nice. Todd, appreciate your time. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, it's an interesting interview there. Uh, I think he's starting to enjoy his harness racing now. I, I don't think initially he was that hell bent on being in it but uh, he's making inroads now with, with driving winners yeah there's no doubt about that as we discussed he was into horsepower just of a different variety he was into the uh, the, 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 the motorsports and uh, the, the bikes and all that sort of stuff but uh, you're right he is enjoying his harness racing now and just recently with uh, his father John being away campaigning Ooh. interstate with the likes of Washaki and co he's had to step up to the plate and he's done that and he's exceeded all expectations he's done a super job in recent times and uh, he's kept the, uh, the winner's ticket over the for the McCarthy clan here in Brisbane so he's a star of the future there's no doubt about it a short break back with more shortly this is the Boxing Day edition of Blinkers Off Brett Cargill is someone who I would describe as a quiet achiever he's a man who doesn't train a lot of horses but he has a deadly strike rate and to learn more about Brett Cargill we sent Chris Barsby on the road recently Brett, it's fair to say that you've been a real journeyman of harness racing. You've been involved for a, a heck of a long time now without giving your age away, but uh, you've been involved with some pretty neat horses uh, over a long period of time now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've probably been in the game while I left school when I was 14, so I've been in the game since then. Mm. Um, so it's nearly 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, but I have been involved with a lot of nice horses, mainly down south, but lately there's been a few up here too. Mm. And, um, yeah, it's been good. Taking it right back to the start, and this is a, a fact that many people wouldn't realise with you. You're a Kiwi. Yeah. New Zealand born. Yep. Yeah, North Kiwi. or South Island? North Island. Yeah, okay. um, but I've been here for 24 or 25 years now mm. and haven't been back. Um, but I moved to Perth with my parents when I was 14. Okay. Um, or 13, sorry. Um, the only reason I went back to New Zealand because I wanted to get into harness racing. Mm -hmm. Had no real background in it, and there was no school in Australia at the time, so I went back to New Zealand to do the school. For so, three years. so what was it with harness racing that caught your imagination? I always liked horses. I was too big to be a jockey. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I decided on harness racing. So you've gone back to New Zealand. You've done your schooling over there with the horses. Yep. When you first moved back to Australia, it was Queensland that was your first origin or port of uh, call. Yeah, I went and worked for um, John McMullen Sr. Mm -hmm. um, that was at Albion Park? At Albion Park, yeah. Uh, and he had some nice horses then. He was biking rain and uh, you know, a few nice mares like Rusty Bye Bye, mm -hmm. Smooth Tina. A few nice horses there then. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, all right. She races a two-year-old. She didn't win, but she was close. She ran about four placings, I think, in her first campaign. Yep. She's destined to win a lot of races herself, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. She, she should win... Some, you know, her, her share of races. Um, she was only fairly small as a two-year-old, and same as the others. She was probably the best two-year-old that we've had out of the mare so far. Mm. She was better than Jack and the other horse, but uh, that was as a two-year-old. Um, she's the same, got the high speed, and is stronger than the others, but not strong enough, you know. Yeah. She, ran, she ran some good races in the final of the size and that sort of race. Mm. You know. As far as the driving situation is concerned with you, you're happy to sit in the grandstand? Yes. Yeah. You knew that never, from a never very early really, age? Yeah, no, it yeah. never really interested me, yeah. driving. But I had a go at it for a while and drove you know, a few, most of my own and I was yeah. driving a few for Daryl every now and then, but no, nah, doesn't worry me. 
nowadays you use Chris Petroff and if he's not available you use Daryl. So you've got the best of both worlds, haven't you? Yep. Yeah. Just on, on Chris, um, where do you rate him as a driver? Uh, I rate him one of the best. Yeah. He's not a very fast learner. <laughs> Keeps getting up for his whip. <laughs> but uh, as far as the driver goes and positioning a horse and knowing, you know, how the race is going, working it out, yeah. how the race is going to be running, so I think he's one of the best. Yeah. Yep. Oh well, well, things look good for you because uh, the next 12 months, if not longer, could be very fruitful through our White Knight and Jack in Flight, and you've got the filly as well, okay, all right. So at this point in time, you're a happy man, and you're content here in Queensland. Very. Yep. Yes. No plans of going into state again? No, no, no. no. Queensland's home. Yeah, no, well, wife and they all her family's up here, so and half of mine's up here now, so yeah, no, we're right. An adopted Queenslander. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, appreciate your time. Good luck in the next uh, 12 months with our White Knight and Jack in flight. Thank you very much. Quietly spoken, gentlemen, but gets results. Absolutely, has had great success in recent times with the likes of our White Knight, Jack in flight. And I'm sure those results will keep coming within the next uh, 18 months, two years, because they're only still fairly young horses, lightly raised, and they've both got good futures. So, Brett Cargill, I'm sure we'll be seeing him in the winner's circle a lot more in the years to come. Chris, thanks for your time tonight. Thanks, David. Chris Barsby joining us. And folks, thanks for your company on Boxing Day, or Boxing Night as it is, as it is now. We wish you a very happy new year, but of course, blinkers on, keeps on rolling. And uh, we'll be back next Monday night for another edition. Until then, good night for now.